Welcome to the Bible in the News. This week the news was full of significant events, some very frightening, such as the nuclear tests conducted by North Korea, which have emphasized the time in which we live as a time when men's hearts are failing them for fear. But we want to focus this week on the G20 summit and the relationship between Britain, the United States, and Russia. The realignment of the Young Lions was seen with the meeting of British Prime Minister Theresa May with U.S. President Barack Obama at the G20 summit in China this past week. Following this, a press conference was held where Obama commented on his meeting with Theresa May. It was a wide-ranging conversation, but it began with the basic premise that uh, even as the U.K. pursues an orderly exit from the EU, Together, we reaffirm uh, the very special relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom. Uh, it will not simply endure, but it will continue to grow stronger with time. Uh, the vibrant economic partnership between our countries will continue as the UK gains further clarity on its new relationship with the EU. Our two countries will be discussing uh, ways in which we continue to sustain uh, and strengthen our trade and investment ties. Here at the G20, we will continue to pursue an agenda of inclusive and sustainable growth. When it comes to security issues, uh, under Prime Minister May, the UK has reaffirmed its strong commitment to the transatlantic uh, security architecture. Uh, we are NATO allies. We see the world uh, in the same way. We will continue to oppose Russian aggression in Ukraine. We will continue to counter cyber threats. We will continue to work diligently to root out terrorist networks and will work to destroy ISIL. We will continue to count on uh, being able to stand together, stand strong with our British friends uh, to make sure that international norms and rules uh, are enforced and are maintained. The bottom line is, is that we don't have a stronger partner uh, anywhere in the world uh, than uh, the United Kingdom. And uh, despite uh, you know, the turbulence of uh, political events over the last several months, uh, we have every intention to making sure that that continues. This is specifically significant as it echoes the language of Ezekiel 38, looking forward to the future invasion of Israel when Britain, Tarshish, and, the Amer and America, along with the rest of the Young Lions, will protest the change in international norms when Russia invades Israel. We read in Ezekiel 38 and verse 13 that Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to carry away cattle and goods, and take away a great spoil? Well, British Prime Minister Theresa May went on to confirm the special relationship Britain has with the United States. As you say, the United States is a special partner for the United Kingdom, a long-standing ally and a close friend. We share the same values of freedom, openness and tolerance. We share intelligence and technology. Our troops train, fight and recuperate together. And together we do more together than any other two countries in the world. And I think that's as true now as it has ever been. First, we have talked about Britain's decision to leave the European Union. The process now and what Brexit means for the UK's relationships with our European friends, but with other countries too. The UK has always been a strong partner for the US and that will remain the case. We have a thriving economic relationship. British businesses export twice as much to the United States as they do to our next largest market. And the United States is the largest inward investor in Britain with total American investments providing more than one million jobs. We need to build on that strong foundation as the UK leaves the EU. We're both strong supporters of free trade. Uh, and today we've discussed how to take forward consultations to ensure that the UK and US have the strongest possible trading relationship. And this reinforces my belief that as we forge a new glo global role for the UK, we can and will seize the opportunities that Brexit presents and make a success of it. May went on to discuss the joint efforts of the US and the UK in creating stability in the Middle East and the alliance's relationship with Russia. In the question session that followed, reporters asked the Prime Minister if Brexit really meant Brexit and about the relationship with the US, and May's response was clear. 
And on the uh, question you asked me about Brexit, yes, Brexit does indeed mean Brexit. On the 23rd of June, the people in the UK voted for the UK to leave the European Union. The government respects that decision. We respect the wishes of the people, and we will put that into practice. So there'll be no second referendum, no attempt to turn the clock back, no attempt to try and get out of this. The UK will be leaving the European Union. On the, uh, on the first point that you raised, uh, Jason, I mean, we've had uh, discussions about the importance of the trading relationship between the United Kingdom and the United States. As you know, I've been very clear that uh, uh, following Brexit, we will be looking to establish new rela trading relationships around the globe. I think there are real opportunities for the United Kingdom. We will be going out and seizing those opportunities. But we have a very strong, uh, as I indicated in my own statement with the, some of the figures that I gave, we have a very strong uh, trading relationship with the United States. And we will be looking to ensure that we can maintain that strongest possible relationship into the future. Well, the development of the relationship between the UK and the US was also highlighted this week by this US Secretary of Defense, Ashton Carter, in a speech he gave at the Blavatnik School of Government in Oxford, where he stated, And so I'd like to speak with you about the steps that our alliance, our special relationship, is taking to continue to stand up for the principles and values that have, for decades, made us all of a safer, freer, more prosperous. During the Cold War, we stood together to confront a global adversary intent on autocracy and dominion. And after we succeeded, we helped bring East and West together again. We stood together to help make and keep the peace in the Balkans. We stood and responded together in the face of terror 15 years ago after 9-11, 11 years ago after the 7-7 bombings fighting side by side during the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And we've continued to do so. And because of all we've done together, our people, our two nations, and people around the world have benefited over these past 75 years. The world's become more prosperous and dynamic as a result. All that change, economic, political, military, social, technological, personal, national, regional, global, has produced many opportunities for both our nations but it's also created challenges, crises as well. Of course, here in Europe, the United States is standing with the United Kingdom and America's NATO allies and taking a strong and balanced approach to deter Russian aggression. With all the change in the world, the inherent logic of our country's special, special relationship still stands. That was true the day before the Brexit vote, and it's true today after the Brexit vote. The United States respects the decision of the British people, and we're committed to continuing to partner together in the months and the years ahead. While I said before the vote that I wished it would go the other way, I'm confident the US and the UK will now focus on the future, and that's what I'm doing. We see that in the ambitious, forward-looking strategic defense and security review conducted by the UK government last year, which has quickly progressed to the implementation phase. We see in the coming modernization of the United Kingdom's continuous at sea deterrent in maritime patrol aircraft, attack helicopters, which make clear the, mil the British military will continue to be among the most capable in the world. Well, it is interesting that Mr. Carter reaffirmed Britain and America's effort to work together. He highlighted Britain's role as an at sea deterrent and naval power. This speaks to the picture the scriptures paint of Britain and the United States, the merchants of Tarshish of Ezekiel 38, being the maritime power described in Ezekiel 27 verses 25 and Isaiah 60 verse 9 which reads, Surely the isle shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far their silver, their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Well, Bible prophecy students have been reading Ezekiel, Daniel, Joel, Zechariah, and other prophecies, and concluded that Russia's aggressive rise is inevitable. The news this week has captured the growing concern from U.S. officials in respect to Russia's growing aggression. In the same speech, U.S. Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter went on to highlight the threat Russia poses to the world today. States like Russia, 
that are trying to play by their own rules, undercutting the principles that have benefited their own country and the rest of the world. None of these actors can overturn the international order completely, but they're intent on undermining its cohesion, questioning its effectiveness, assailing its legitimacy. Despite the progress that we made together in the aftermath of the Cold War, Russia's actions in recent years, its violations of Ukrainian and Georgian territorial integrity, its unprofessional behavior in the air, in space, and in cyberspace, as well as its nuclear saber rattling, all have demonstrated that Russia has clear ambition to erode the principled international order that has served the United States, our allies and partners, the international community, and in fact, Russia itself so well. As it does so, Russia appears driven by a misguided ambition and misplaced fear. Russia wants to be considered, and very understandably, as the important world power it is, one of historic importance. Unfortunately, its tendency is to pursue that goal by undercutting the work and contributions of others rather than by creating or making positive contributions on its own. So is instability rather than cultivating stability. Lashes out, alleging that it fears for its own viability and future, even though no nation, not the United States, not the United Kingdom, seeks to defeat it or constrain its potential, just the opposite. We've all expressed an interest in being able to work more closely with Russia. This view of Russia aligns with a picture painted in Ezekiel 38, where it describes an aggressive power intent on aggressive expansion into the Middle East. We read, Thus saith the Lord God, it shall come to pass that at the same time thou shalt, or things shall come into thy mind, and thou shalt think in evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are rest, to them that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spot Oil, to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods and dwell in the midst of the land. Verses 10 to 12. Well, Carter went on to describe how America and its allies are tooling up to face Russia down, even though they don't really want to. Now, in response to this behavior, the United States is taking a strong and balanced approach to address Russia's actions and deter Russian aggression against our allies. We're strengthening our capabilities, our posture, our investments, our plans, and our allies and partners, all the while keeping the door open to working with Russia wherever and whenever our interests align. And let me be clear, the United States does not seek a cold, let alone a hot war, with Russia. We don't seek an enemy in Russia. But also make no mistake, we will defend our allies, the principled international order, and the positive future it affords us. We will counter attempts to undermine our collective security and will not ignore attempts to interfere with our democratic processes. This also speaks clear to the words of Joel, where the nations coming off a time of peace tool up for war once again. We read in chapter 3, verses 9 to 10, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say, I am strong. Verses 9 to 10 of Joel. It is also fascinating that he spoke about a change in policy for the past 20 years in trying to deter Russia. Now, we haven't had to prioritize deterrence in the transatlantic community's eastern flank for over 25 years. Unfortunately, now we do. Carter went on to describe how the U.S. has tripled its budget for containing Russia in Europe. NATO has also rewritten its policy book for dealing with Russia. Carter finished his speech by stating... You see, for decades, the United States and the United Kingdom and millions of American and British service members have helped provide the security and uphold the values that have allowed millions upon millions of people around the world to be safe, to raise their children, to dream their dreams, to live lives that are full, and to contribute to the civilization you see all around you here in this city. At a time of change and at a type of time of challenges to what our two nations have built and defended, we have to continue 
to do so together. And as we do, we must not be afraid of change or intimidated at the challenge or doubtful of our capacity to meet it. So as we continue to watch the realignment of the nations following the Brexit vote, we can see the hand of the angels moving the nations into the role predicted in the scriptures. We can have confidence that what our God has promised, he will perform. For the Bible in the News, this has been Jonathan Bowen joining you.